Hello everyone, welcome to Uni Voyage. This is your one-stop shop for all the kind of educational content that we're going to bring you. The, here today we have a very special guest with us, Mr. Vedan Jain, who's cleared the IIT JE and is now studying at IIT Madras. Uh, we'll ask Vedan Jain to introduce himself and then we'll dive right into the questions. Yeah, Vedan. Uh, hi, I'm Vedant. Uh, I'm from Mumbai. I come from an ICSE background. I've studied in CNM school. And uh, growing up, I didn't have any particular interest. Uh, just like any other kid, uh, my dream profession used to change periodically, ranging from like a doctor all the way to an astronaut. I think that's pretty normal for kids. And uh, but after a point, I wanted to do automobile engineering because let's face it, every other guy has a fantasy about cars. So that's where the engineering aspect came into my life. And uh, right now, I'm a freshman for a BTEC program at IIT Madras, and I'm really happy to be a part of this interview. Thank you. All right. Uh... That's that's wonderful. Okay, so firstly, congratulations uh, on getting in IIT Madras. Secondly, uh, obviously, I mean, one percent of the people actually clear JE. So you must have thought of some backup plans, or you know, you can guide our viewers as to what all exams were you planning to give on, and what all exams should an ideal engineering aspects uh, engineering aspirant should plan on giving. So yeah, what were your like backups, or what other exams were you aiming for? Uh, okay, so when I started studying, uh, it wasn't just for an IIT. Uh, the basic idea was that I'm going to be having entrance exams right after I finish my 12th grade, right? So to be very honest, uh, pre preparing for an exam like JEE pretty much covers up the entrance exams for all other colleges, like BITSAT, which is for BITS Pilani. Then there's MHT CET, which is uh, for all colleges in Maharashtra or for uh, some private colleges like Manipal and BIT, which is Bellore Institute of Technology in Tamil Nadu. And uh, the difficulty level of JEE advanced is naturally the highest among all these entrances examinations. So preparing for something tough will automatically help in clearing the easier entrance examinations. So during my preparation time, I kept my focus primarily on JEE. And uh, apart from JEE, the other backup options were BITSAT, which is for BITS Pilani, and CET. And CET also, uh, my plan was basically to look at colleges offered in Mumbai, which is like VJTI or maybe DJ Sangvi or ICT. So I think the main, main focus right now uh, for people uh, aspiring for JEE, apart from that, should be BITSAT because Bits Pilani is like maybe there are like top six, seven IITs, and then Bits Pilani comes higher than a lot of the newer IITs. So, Bits Pilani is a very good option and it's private, so I think it's in the comfort zone of a lot of people. And for people who are in Maharashtra, CET is a very good option. And if not CET, they can still look forward to private colleges like SRM or uh, VIT or Manipal. All right, uh, that's that's wonderful. And another uh, question would be that how did you actually went through your preparation? As in, uh, you obviously must have joined some integrated coaching classes or something like that. And how did you go on about your preparation for JE? And secondly, uh, how did you keep yourself calm and motivated? Because we know that JE aspirants put in a lot of efforts throughout 11th and 12th. And this year was particularly exceptional because of the pandemic and the exams were getting postponed. Uh, so how did you keep yourself motivated during these tough times uh, and preparing so, so hard for them? Uh, to be very honest, I, I actually started preparing for my exams a little later. Like there are many people who start preparing for, such, uh, for JEE right from the eighth grade, ninth grade. They start a foundation course and then they jump into an integrated course in the 11th and 12th grade. So in my situation, I didn't uh, do any foundation course, of course. And uh, I, my parents enrolled me in Champions Academy, which is in Andheri, Mumbai. So this was an integrated uh, program for two years. And uh, like even after that, I, I, I still started off a little late. So which, which I felt was in my benefit because 
because of the pandemic so this year people who have been studying for 2 years they had to study for 6 more months or maybe a little over 6 more months and having to start a little late and even if you start early there's a higher chance that if you keep studying you'll burn out after after a point you you burn out so uh, i think uh, that worked out in my favor but uh, it was it was very difficult to keep up in this pandemic and you know we i i had a habit of uh, studying in a library and in a, in a library the environment is very different there are people studying all day and you that keeps you motivated over there it'll keep you going all day you don't have to look left and right and the moment you look you see there are people their heads are in the book which keeps you motivated that even you should look down and get focused right but uh, it it wasn't easy La, everything was shut and we had to start studying at home and classes started getting online uh, but i think the only thing that kept me going was uh, knowing that like it was very indefinite as to when the exam would be coming so we just knew that we had to keep keep it going we had to keep ourselves motivated and uh, i guess my parents were also working from home and it did help in that environment because i could see my parents also working which helped me you know dive in and uh, i think uh, even when you talk to your friends uh, even like we know the whole world is studying right now it's not that you're the only one locked in a room who is you know just studying for 12 hours a day so i think uh, the whole, the the affects uh, your study pattern so i think i would suggest everyone to you know to just have a place where they can keep their minds focused and preferably a library is the best place and uh, apart from that uh, they just have to be really confident and consistent with their work i guess the more you keep studying you keep studying your mind will just get uh, will just get frustrated after a point right so uh, and for practice i think uh, like for preparation for an exam like jee solving questions is very important and reading books reading theory uh, i guess this this is not something like people say a lot but reading theory for an exam like jee is very important you get to know the details behind the behind the applications of uh, various theories so i think the reading reading part is just as important as the solving part and giving test papers is and jee advance it has two exams in in one day so during the pandemic i i was basically preparing for my jee advance so i had to give two papers in a day so you after waking up i had to give one paper till my lunch time after, you know i had to give one paper till my lunch time and then after lunch time i had to give another paper so and like just giving two papers it's basically 6 o'clock in the evening so after that you check your question paper you uh, you look for your mistakes and after you look uh, after looking into that you look for the theory you see where you went wrong so i think this was this just kept me occupied all the time during the pandemic and uh, i guess the consistency was maintained because of the environment in the house so yeah that's that's brilliant actually uh, so another one question would uh, again this is following the previous one that giving and uh, giving exam in a home like environment or in a coaching class is starkly different from actually going at the test center and giving the exam so like what approach did you follow while doing that like uh, approaching the questions in an actual je uh, exam in a test center setup uh okay so even while practicing test papers at home uh, everyone is supposed to have a specific pattern which they are supposed to have in their mind as to how they are going to go about in the paper so usually the uh, uh protocol is to start with chemistry and then people either jump to mathematics or physics so chemistry is a lot of fact based or knowledge based so chemistry requires a lot of a lot of mugging up like not just mugging up there's mugging up also and there's application also so chemistry is a lot fact based and it's easier to score so i think everyone starts with chemistry and when you and i personally uh, jumped to mathematics after chemistry in my examination because uh, 
math is basically math is something you can only get from practice the more you practice the better and math is just you, you think and you proceed it's it's basically a lot of manipulation about how you can manipulate the question and get the answer and physics is where the theory kicks in you need to know the theory like like a to z theory you should have it in your head because from the theory you will be able to read and understand the question and that's how you'll apply the concept in the in that particular question to get the answer so uh, for my examination i started with chemistry i jumped to uh, maths and then i went to physics and uh, during this time i i all i used to start with questions which i knew i could uh, solve easily because there's also a time crunch in the examination so it's better to first attempt the questions which you know you'll be able to solve and then mark the questions which you think you'll be able to solve but you're not getting it right at that time because of the pressure so you should mark those questions and you should jump back to them after you finish all the questions you think you you've done correctly so i think i think that should be the general approach for everyone uh, to to crack the exam all right that's that's great and um, another like diverting from the je aspect you obviously must have uh, you've secured a really great rank in je and have uh, approached a lot of universities and must have spoken on researched upon a lot of other universities as well before uh, taking admission into iit madras so what should an ideal engineering aspirant look for when he decides his dream university or when he decides the university that he wants to go obviously placements and stuff is a big part of uh, you know uh, criteria that people and especially parents keep in mind while selecting uh, top institutes like iits or iims so apart from placements obviously there's more to an engineering college so what aspects did you keep in mind before uh, choosing iit madras okay yeah, so first of all iit is a brand name uh, everyone is aware of that so i don't think like if anyone aspires to do engineering iit should be their top priority that's what i feel because iit is going to base apart from the brand name apart from that uh, that respect that you're going to get after being an iit in apart from that the overall development that happens in a college like iit is this is something that you'll not get in any other college in india so iit offers base, basically an all all round development apart from academics it will give you a culture a cultural diversity all uh, uh, right uh, you can enjoy the festivals that uh, the college hosts not just there are tech fests there are cultural fests dance music singing like like you name it and it's going to be there and apart from that for sports enthusiasts it's it's the best college i, I one of the best engineering colleges in the country and uh, if not iit the main aspects that people should look forward to while selecting a college should be the alumni network the college should basically have a legacy and iits are very old iits or bits pilani these are very old colleges these have very strong alumni networks lots of graduates from these colleges and these graduates are spread all across the world so whenever you need help or some day you think of doing a startup you want to connect to someone from the college you know you want to get ideas you want to get in touch with someone the alumni network is the is something that will take you forward and and uh, frankly colleges like iit they uh, they have such a tough entrance examination so you know that the type of people coming into a crowd are going to be highly intellectual so another key uh, point to note here is that apart from alumni network the peer group in your college is something Is is something that is going to develop you for all those four or five years that you're going to be there in the college for. These are the people who are going to help you move forward in life. They're going to give you ideas. They're going to develop your mind. They're going to train you, right? And they're going to help you develop skills. And you know, these are the people you can have the best memories with. Apart from just the fun stuff, these are the people who are going to take you forward in life. So I think the key aspect, apart from placements and recruitments, the alumni network and the peer group is something that is. that is really important while selecting a college all right yeah so adding to that alumni network point i'd like to point out that this year in fact because of the pandemic there were major job losses and you know unemployment in india is currently at its peak 
despite that all the i especially the older iits top 5 iits and top 5 iims witnessed one of the best placement seasons and that's solely because the alumni network kicked in saying that we'll be providing you with all kinds of recruitment uh, facilities that uh, the aspirant or the candidates want to so i guess a strong alumni network definitely helps a lot so now uh, yeah. coming to the question that what would be your uh, message to the je aspirants you've touched a lot upon uh, this aspect in your previous answers as well so like what would be like your final word to the or to a person who's preparing for je i think uh, what they need to understand is that this is je preparation is something you need to do very wholeheartedly this is something that will take a lot of time and effort and you need to be very consistent and to be consistent in your work you should feel it in your heart that feel it in your heart or your brain that this is something that you want so till the time you don't have the motivation uh, that this is something that i want it's going to be get a little difficult but if you have a fire like that inside you i don't think it uh, cracking je is something undoable it is very much doable and uh, you just need to work hard and uh, be consistent uh, with your efforts that's all brilliant so like the final concluding uh, question is that how excited are you to actually go to uh, iit madras currently obviously the online method is uh, not that uh, convenient but how yeah. excited are you to actually go on campus i'm i'm pretty excited the campus is huge it's it's around 620 acres which which is really huge there's a national park i mean apart from the campus brilliance the type of research facilities that they offer the type of uh, the type of cultures that they uh, cultural festivals that they offer this is something that i'm looking forward to because in a city like mumbai you don't you don't you don't get to see festivals right at a school at a school at a school going time so i think the campus life and the hostel life this is something that everyone should experience in their life and this is the some this is the part i'm looking to enjoy the most right now so i'm re- i'm really excited to go to campus and that's that's great actually and so thank you so much vedant for uh, joining us on this interview and thank you everyone for tuning in and make sure that you guys do like and share this video as much as possible to all the aspirants that you can and uh, please do make sure to subscribe the univoya channel and we'll be coming up with a lot more interviews uh, very soon so thank you so much guys for tuning in